be to Jesus. I was going to sing and, and enter into the swagger. I said maybe we just cool down a little bit today. You know, the weeks of Advent, they are divided into themes, and we get those themes from the reading. And today, the second week, is a theme of peace, and in some places, they also add love, because peace and love seems to be brothers and sisters. But that peace is coming from the end of the second reading, that when the Lord comes, he will find us zealous, without any spot or blemish, and he will find us at peace. He will find us at peace. One of the most humbling tasks of a priest is to say after confession, your sins are forgiven, he gives the absolution, and he tells you to go in peace. It's a very humbling task of a priest. Because sometimes when the priest is sitting at the confessional and is telling people to go in peace, he is asking himself, am I at peace? And so during this time of Advent, I want us to try as much as possible to keep peace as the focus for this week, to be at peace as we prepare for the coming of the Lord. My father died in 1996. Many people came because we used to sing in the choir. So a lot of choristers came to our house. You know, they were singing, praying with us. They were commiserating with us. A lot of parishioners came because my mom was active in the CWO. I see you today in your beautiful colors. And they were coming to pray with the family to give support. A lot of neighbors came. Some were using words, words of scriptures, words of kindness, words of peace. But there is one girl in the choir, I can't remember her name now, but I have her face vaguely in my mind. This is 1996, and I still have that person, I don't know the name, I have the face vaguely. Maybe now that masses are being streamed everywhere, maybe she will be hearing me now somewhere. When she came, she sat down. She didn't say a word. She was just praying with us. But this girl, maybe at that time in her early 20s, maybe 22, 23, she had the grace of peace. Many people were talking, some were singing, some were praying, but the vibration in the room that this young girl carried, she was a lady of peace. She didn't say anything, but that was the person I was looking in the whole room, that her presence was higher in quality than others who were coming, so we bring something. They were all doing well. But there was one person that has spirit because peace is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. That is why sometimes you will see some boys, they will be jumping up and down. They can be having a lot of problems or anxieties in their life. Then they will meet somebody. It can just be somebody they met at the bank or in the church or somewhere. And from that moment, that man will begin to chase that lady until he marries her. Even at some point, the girl will start becoming afraid, like, ah, what do you see for my body? Once you are a peaceful person, you don't need to be very intelligent. You don't need to be having a lot of money. You don't need to be very, I don't know, skillful in many things. It's a huge attraction. Everybody wants peace. Everybody wants peace. 
And so this second week of Advent that we are recommended in the church that try to be a peaceful person. That's why I started by talking about the confession. It's a place where you can really get peace of mind. There are some people that are still struggling to confess some sins that they remember, but the lips cannot say it. And that is blocking your peace. There are some people that are still waiting for an apology. Long time coming. They, they are waiting for an apology. An old apology. If only that person can just send a test and say, I am sorry. You will just give them peace. And for you young people and maybe some of the children looking here, don't be thinking, when I become big, I will do something for my mommy. When I, when I grow up and I, I become very important, ah, I, will, I will build house for my daddy. Sometimes we children are the reason why our parents don't have peace of mind. Because they know us. They know what we can do. And there are some things they don't even know that we can also do. So sometimes children are the ones who are making their parents not to have peace of mind. When the parents think about the children, sometimes the way they listen to them or they don't listen to them, or the way they under, then the parents don't have peace of mind. So it's very soothing for children to give their parents peace of mind so that your parents can live long. In the first reading, the prophet Isaiah says, Comfort, comfort my people. You see that example I gave of time of bereavement, when people came to help to give us comfort. All of us can be angry. We all have our sparks, like electric current. The day the wire will not connect very well, Bash, bosh, everywhere. Everybody can slap. Some are good with the front hand. Some are very good with the back hand. We are not encouraging violence, but we can all, we can all spank and fight. Everybody can curse when we are angry, when we are provoked. But the word of God says what? Comfort my people. Comfort my people. I have seen people who have carried cutlass in the past. Everybody is running away. Say, come on for Rodo. Come on for Rodo. And somebody will walk into the place, call the person by the name, and say, give me that cutlass. When the person will make eye contact with that person, we calm down. It's a spiritual gift. Sometimes some people are very good in making peace. They are good when be husband and wife, you know, not everything we can say in public. It's like the marriage is over and over. And then you call them to come in. They are comforters. They will listen to this side. They will listen to the other side. Sometimes they don't talk much. What, what do you want to tell them that they don't know? Is it the Bible? Is it common sense? Is it our culture? What do you want to tell them? But the person is a comforter. The way the person carries themselves or herself, the way they use their words, their body language, that spirit of peace that they carry, when they enter into the situation, people begin to agree to say, okay, let's renegotiate. That is what we are told to focus on in this second week of Advent. And finally, John the Baptist is introduced in the gospel. Now you have to be careful with this one. Jesus Christ said, of all men born of a woman, there is no one greater than John the Baptist.
That's a very serious thing to say about a human being. And it's God that is talking. Jesus Christ was fully man, but also fully God. So his own domain is a bit on a different level. Which means that of all the men that have lived in this world, who is the number one, the greatest one? John the Baptist. So if it is a day to give award, we want to bring certificates. All human beings come together. Hey, musician. Bo, 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 bo. Now we want to give the award for the most la, 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 of all human beings in the whole world. John the Baptist will come forward. Why? What was his greatest qualities? Two. One, he was a fearless preacher for the truth. And he died for it. He paid the price for it. A fearless preacher of the truth. What is right is right. And what is wrong is wrong. We cannot compromise the gospel. We cannot compromise the gospel. Usually when you want to do something good, nobody has a problem. It's when you are forced or you are manipulated or if you like a big word, you are coerced, difficult to spell, to change the truth. That is where the test of character comes. They will bring the paper to you and they will tell you, sign here. Sign here. You know I'm doing this movie for the street children, oratory, Don Bosco. Many of you are also helping here in the parish. I thank you. But we are looking for money. And I have come across dirty money. I couldn't take it. They say, Father, this, you are not serious with this or something that you are doing. I say, in fact, I'm very serious. It is precisely because I'm very serious, that is why I cannot take the dirty money. Dirty money does not mean it's coming from arm robbers. But there are people that are giving you money with conditions. I scratch your back, you scratch my back. There are people that are giving you money as long-time investments. I give you this one now, but later, when I need you for three times or later in the future for that money, then you have to give me also your own back. There are people that we also know that maybe what they do is not very morally okay. And they know that you know. And they will be testing you to say, you go take. But you know where will they bring and come from? Oh, uh -huh, and there will they, you go take. So that they will want you to decide by yourself to join them. It's not as if they just transfer the money to the account. Then you say, ah, thank God, oh, they have given to God. Okay, God knows the heart. No, 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 no. They will say, this is where it is coming from. Oh, just, you know, you say you'll be father. Uh -huh. This is what I do. You go take. So that you will not intentionally take. So John the Baptist was endorsed by Jesus Christ because he stood for the truth. Then he was talking to the highest authority of the land and it was a case of a marriage that was not right. So you cannot marry your brother's Philip's wife. You can't do that. It's against the culture, it's against the law of God, and so on. And he was put in prison. May we not find ourselves in prison in Jesus' name. I don't know if it was Gandhi or one of the famous authors who said, it is better to allow a guilty person to go free than 
to get an innocent person in prison. And there are people who are in prison by error or by malice. Somebody made sure that I will so deal with you and you will, I will lock you up. And they are there now. And some have died there. Nobody came to help them. These are the John the Baptist of today. That's why I said, be careful a bit of this third part. But Jesus Christ said, they are the greatest. They are the greatest. Blessed are you when people persecute you. There are some women now, they don't have children. They never had children. But you don't know how many things they refuse to do. And said, if God is going to answer my prayer, I'm ready. If God is not going to answer my prayer, I am ready. And they are suffering in silence. But they are standing for the truth and for their faith. The second quality of John the Baptist was that he was very humble. I'm going to twist this a little bit. So stay with me. I'm, I'm seeing that you are listening. You are all very good students. If you are in my university now, I'll give all of you A+. Plus. <laughs> what I do when I lecture, I, I digress a little bit now. I give the students the questions before. That these are the questions that are going to come in the exam. So read it, because I want you to pass. What's the point of hiding the question that when they come, they will now fail? No. Give them the questions so they can read very well. And during the exam, they give you the right exams. Or the right answers. It's not as if you are leaking the question to them so they will get all the answers. No, no, no. For this, there are 10 maybe units or topics. Exam is going to come in units. Two, four, and nine. If you not get sense, you not get sense. So read the other units for general knowledge, but area of attack. That's what they used to call it for area of attack for the exam. You need two, six, and nine. Prepare yourself, and there will be three questions. Uh uh. Yoruba se kilo ku. So stay with me a little bit in the second quality of John the Baptist. He was extremely humble. You know, especially in our country here and, and elsewhere, people pray a lot and cast out demons from people who are sick, people who cannot sleep at night, people who feel attacked, people who feel their businesses have been altered because of all kinds of things. And also, some people who have gone to do things to themselves. You go river, go bath. You go here, go swallow this one. People have gone to do, and now they feel like, okay, I want to come back home. I'm afraid. I need prayers to cleanse all of these things up. The shouting and the screaming and the bo 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 that does not scare the devil. Because that is the same tactics he uses to frighten people. When you hear devil, we fear. Horror of him. You fear. So you are using fear to fight fear. No. But when you want to respond to such things, try to be very humble. So when the light of God is coming, you, that is the vessel, you are so humble, the light will pass through you. Just one shot. Pah! No obstacle. You are not putting yourself in the front. You are not claiming to be greater than Moses and Elijah. You are just a humble servant of the Lord. You are asking the Lord to come and help in this situation. The more you are bringing yourself down like John the Baptist, John the Baptist, John the Baptist, John the Baptist, Jesus will emerge. That is the formula. You are not even worthy to undo the lashet of his sanders. But you are proclaiming the truth. You are interceding, but you are full. People will be coming to you and say, me, for where? Go that, you are missing the road. Go there. That's the source. You'll be channeling. You bring people to the right channel. Anytime you hear people making themselves the intercessors, making themselves the one that if you don't pass through me, you cannot reach the kingdom of God. 
if I don't see it for you and so on, they are fake. F-A-K-E, fake. And they will collect your money. So humility is a strong spiritual weapon. It's a very, there are many people that have been healed. They don't give testimonies. Sometimes we beg them, just say a few so that it will encourage us. Oh, no, 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 no. Because the more they encounter God, the more they feel so humble. But they have encountered God. They have the spirit of John the Baptist. They have deeply encountered God. But to use the amount to be, I'm not saying it's not good to praise God, to give thanks to God and so on. But they don't show off. I'm sure Father Peter Moba will agree with me. I don't know all of you here. Sometimes those who dance from the back of the church to the front three, four times and the rest. I don't know whether they won't put anything during the offering. Then you have those who don't even leave their seats. When they make the transfer, even the bank is vibrating. Who is more generous? I'm not saying if you don't have, you have to force yourself. But sometimes people who are really, really generous, they don't show off. In their heart of heart, they are grateful. They know what they are supposed to do. And when there is a call, they just do it. And they don't even want anything announced. And that's how parishes survive. There are, you have people like that everywhere. And so those two things, if you, I know there's comforting people. It's a gift. We pray for it. To be a person of peace is also a gift. We pray for it. And it's a strong attraction. But to be like Christ, from the example of John the Baptist today, speak the truth. Maybe you are not going to carry a microphone and start cursing all the politicians in the country. But at least confess your own sins and be truthful to yourself. And find peace for your soul. After, you can start working on your neighbor. But start from yourself. Be truthful to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Then the second one, be humble. And the more you are humble, the more God will begin to use you. And the more God uses you, the more you will be finding yourself also more humble and you will be growing in spirit, and you will resemble Christ, who will resemble John the Baptist. Apologies for the choir and all those that we didn't sing today. You see, I had many things to say, so I was trying to squeeze everything together. I pray that this week of Advent will be a blessing for all of us in Jesus' name. I pray we will find peace, we will not delay our conversion in Jesus' name. And I pray that children will not wait before they give their parents peace of mind. Please, children and young people here, you don't need to buy something big. Let your parents know that you are trying. Let them know what's going on. Let them have peace of mind when you talk to them. And we are very, very smart. We know what we can tell them. That is the truth that can give our parents peace of mind. And we pray for the gift of humility so that we can be strong and Jesus can use us through Christ our Lord.